I meant to tell you all, I try to tell folks uh, uh, before I ever start, if I sing a song you recognize, help me out. Of course, Lewis already knew that. He'd heard me say it and, and didn't care if I didn't want him to anyway. Well, I'm going to make no difference. And that's the way I am. You can't help it. But if anything else I sing, these next two or three songs, help me out. I like this. <laughs> There are some people who say we cannot tell whether we are saved or whether all is well. They say we only can hope and trust that it's so. But I was there when it happened and I guess I ought to know. Well, I was there when Jesus saved me, the very moment he forgave me. He took away my heavy burdens, well, he gave me peace within. Satan can't make me doubt it, it's real and I'm going to shout it. I was there when it happened, and I guess I ought to know. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I don't care who tells me salvation is not real. Though the world may argue that we cannot feel the heavy burdens lifted and the vile sins go. But I was there when it happened well, I guess I ought to know. I was there when Jesus saved me. The very moment he forgave me. He took away my heavy burdens. Well, he gave me peace within. Satan can't make me doubt it. It's real and I'm going to shout it. I was there when it happened. Well, I guess I ought to know. Yes, I know when Jesus saved me, the very moment he forgave me, he took away my heavy burdens, he gave me peace within. Satan can't make me doubt it. It's real and I'm going to shout it. I was there when it happened. Well, I guess I ought to know. Amen. Somebody said, well, how do you know you saved? When I got up out of, out, out, of the, out of that sawdust, I had Satan on one corner on one shoulder telling me, he said, boy, you done messed up tonight. You know there ain't no possible way for you to live this life you supposedly have taken on. And I had Jesus sitting on my other shoulder saying, if you'll hold of my hand, you can do anything. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Yes. If Satan ain't messing with you, better check up. Every one of y'all know this song. So you may as well help me out. As the world looks upon me as I struggle alone. Will they say that I have nothing but they are so wrong. In my heart I'm rejoicing. Oh, how I wish they could see. For your blessing on me There's a roof up above me I've got a good place to sleep There's food on my table And I have shoes on my feet you gave me 
your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me. I already had a fine family, but he gave me a larger family that includes every one of you. If you're saved by the grace of God, you're my kinfolk. Well, I know that I'm not wealthy. These clothes, they're not new. I don't have much money. But Lord, I have you. And to me, that's all that matters. Though the world may not see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me. There's a room. Up above me, I have a good place to sleep. There's food on my table and shoes on my feet. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. For your blessing on me. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing on me. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. You know, these altars are open. You got something to pray about? You know, uh, folks don't realize. They see I'm up here with a smile on my face singing the praises. Directly, frankly, Frankie will be up here with a smile on his face uh, preaching the gospel. And and you 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 don't realize that we're, our heart may be breaking inside. We had a commitment to honor this morning. And, and my family will tell you that if I've made a commitment to you, if I'm not in the hospital, more than likely I'm going to honor that commitment. But I've, I've went on and sang when I've had relatives to pass on. I went, me not singing wasn't going to change it. Wasn't going to change a thing. I had a lady that buried her mama and come on up and played piano for us that night. She said, I'd rather be with God's people than any place else I can think to be. I can draw my strength from God. Amen? I uh, had a friend of mine that was going through uh, terrible times with his wife. And I know there was times that his, his, his smile was painted on. But he put it on and he went on and lifted up the name of Jesus. So, you know, just because that we sing or just because that we preach, or just because we teach Sunday school, or do any kind of work in the church, or for the Lord, don't mean that everything's going great in our life. Uh, you know, you don't, you just, you don't know what's behind that smile. There's times that we would really like to lay the microphone down and pray. I usually try to do my praying before I get up here, because there's usually something I want to say to the Lord. Uh, I, I come down the road most of the time, talking to the Lord coming down the road. Some of y'all are old enough, uh, I don't know if you've been around gospel music enough, but to remember Eva May LaFever. And I can remember, I can remember hearing an interview, a radio interview with Eva May LaFever and the, the, uh, the uh, announcer asked her, said, uh, said Miss Eva May, said, did, uh, did y'all ever leave out headed for a big singing and you and your husband just grumble and gripe all the way down the road? And then hop out of that bus with a big old smile on your face and get up there and sing to beat the band. She said, yes, we did, and you did too if you ever done it. 
It happens. We're human. Just because we sing or we preach, we're human. There's a carnal man still in, in here. Amen. Sometimes we had to fight that carnal man pretty hard. Lewis, come here and help me finish this last song. I'm going to go ahead and start. Get up here and get your microphone. We'll finish this song and get out of Frankie's way. I wonder so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I, I saw the light. That blind man I want to belong. For me, I pray for my own. Then like that blind man that God gave back his sight. Praise the Lord, I, I saw, saw the light. light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more in darkness, no more in night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. To wander and stray Straight is the gate And narrow is the way Now I have tread It's the wrong for the right Praise the Lord Your I saw the light I saw the light I saw the light No more in darkness No more in Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Praise the Lord, y'all, I saw the light. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shackled by a heavy, heavy burden Neath the load of guilt and shame Listen now And then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same because he touched me oh he touched me and all oh, the joy that floods my soul oh something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. Since I met this blessed 
Savior. And since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I will shout while eternity rolls because he touched me oh he touched me and all oh, the joy that floods my soul oh something happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole. He touched me, oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul, oh. Something happened, and now, now I know he touched me and he made me whole. He touched me and made, made me whole. Oh, I'm so glad he touched me. I had no one to blame. How I longed to hide my face. I was so ashamed for all the wrongs I'd done. And I knew I had to pay. I was bound. To face hell's flames, I'd be there today. My friends, but for the blood. But for the blood shed on Calvary's tree. But for the blood, there'd be no hope for you and me. For all my righteousness is filthy rags, and that's all I'll ever be. But for the blood that cleansed and set me free. Even now I get so low You know, old Satan, he'll let me know I'm so undeserving I'm unworthy of God's love And yes, I know that it's true But here I am with the chosen few I stand today I'm saved just by the blood But for the blood Shed on Calvary's tree But for the blood There be no hope for you and me For all my righteousness is filthy rags and that's all I'll ever be but for the blood that cleansed and set me free but for the blood that cleansed and set me free glory to God you know I'm glad that when God looks down on me
that all he sees is the blood. That's all he sees. Glory to God. I'm glad the blood's been applied. He will calm the troubled waters of your soul. Take your broken heart and make you whole. And if the storms of your life grow dark and cold, He will calm the troubled waters, the dark stormy waters of your soul. If your heart is heavy with grief and trouble, you will not have to bear it all alone. For you have a friend who knows about your struggle. He'll be standing by when all your friends are gone. He will calm the troubled waters of your soul. He'll take your broken heart and make you whole. And if your storms of your life grow dark and cold, he will calm the troubled waters, those dark, stormy waters of your soul. Listen to this. Deep in every heart there is a longing to find happiness and oh, such peace of mind. And if your heart is weary, weary from the searching, just turn to Jesus, my friend, and then you'll find. He will calm the troubled waters of your soul. Take your broken and heart and make you whole and when the storms of your life grow dark and cold he will calm the troubled waters the dark stormy waters of your soul he will calm the troubled waters of your soul take your broken heart and make you whole and when the storms of your life grow dark and cold he will calm the troubled waters those dark troubled waters the dark Troubled waters of your soul.
Brother Frankie, it hurts me to hear when I see a sister or a brother hurting. That's God for them. I don't know what else to say. But God. Not my God. Our God knows it all. He holds a child in his hand when it's aborted. And we the people want to know, what happened to the cure for cancer? What happened to cure for whatever, Brother Frankie? But you know what God's reply is? You sent him back home. You sent her back home because you didn't want it. Now, don't ask me why I said that. But that lays on my heart, Brother Frankie. When we have a loved one to go on, it hurts to hear. But you know what God has given us? Do you know what the gift God gives us? Our memories of what something that was once was. But if we keep living right, trusting in God, we have a promise, not a maybe. We have a promise. If you've read the book, you know where I'm coming from. We're going to be reunited. Be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. I will always have the Lord. If I live, God is with me. But if I die, I'm with him. If I die, I'll be with him. And that's the joy of the Lord, is knowing where we're going. And if we're so caught up in things of the world, we may miss out. The Bible also says we can be so heavily minded we know where it can be good. I'm on earth. I have a family. Yeah, and I got a great grandchild. Precious little thing. That child knows nothing but what it's going to be taught. And what would you want the child to be taught? The goodness of God. Nothing but the goodness of God. Yeah, the goodness of God. I'm kind of homesick. For a country where I've never been before. Anymore. 
It's amazing how God moves in, in different ways, and God always shows up and changes the plan. And I mean, I, I knew it was going to be one of those kind of mornings. I just felt it when I drove up on the property this morning. That, but I think Tina and us, I told her last night that I had worked on a few things, and I just didn't have a, a clear avenue, even when I laid my head down last night, of which direction to go in this morning. And now I know exactly why. Because God always has a plan. And we just have to be obedient and listen to what God has to say. Amen. Um, I do have something I'm going to say, though. Amen. And I know what time it is. And y'all know how long I like to preach. Amen. I didn't get me any amens right there. You know, I'm just aggravating y'all. I'll always aggravate you. Um, as I was sitting back there thinking and listening to Brother Jerry, Seeing, I, I, I saw God, and I like to watch and observe the crowd from the back side. I like to look at the back of your heads. And, but I get to look at you, the front side, from up here. But as I, as I was watching God be, begin to move around in the room, and I watched him pull up a seat beside you, sister. And I watched God begin to touch and massage on your heart and bring some things to mind. And um, You know, I'm, I'm thankful for those times because God will pull up a chair beside his kids. God will come minister to the broken and, and the ones that's going through and have, has a heavy load and or, or heavy burden and, and we feel downtrodden sometimes and know which way to turn. God will always show up when you seek him. Amen. God will always show up. And and, and and as I was sitting back there, I got to thinking. You know, I got to thinking and I, I began to look at my notes, my little feeble thought that I had for this morning. And as I began to kind of push that to the side and look at something else and I, I, I've i testified about this many times, but I, but I sure am glad I'm saved. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm saved. I mean, they, 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 there's times in my life where I probably don't look saved, and I sure don't act saved. Amen. The whole church ought to just took a lap right then. Amen. There's a lot of times we don't act saved. But thank God I am saved this morning. Thank God you are saved, sister, and God will pull up beside you. And remind you of some things in your soul and speak to you right in the time when you need it. Um, when I got saved, there wasn't really that many people around. I was in my home. Nobody jumped up and down and got excited about it. The paper didn't, the Banner Herald or the Madison County Journal, they didn't write anything. There was no article in the paper about me getting saved. It was just me and the preacher and Tina was in the room. And nobody in the world knew what was going on in, in our little kitchen on that Thursday evening that God showed up. Wasn't no big deal. The world didn't care at all. But thank God, there was some rejoicing going on in heaven. Amen. Oh, yes. The world might not have knew about it, but I'm going to tell you right now, they, the Bible tells me there was angels in heaven rejoicing. The day that the Lord got a hold of me and sent somebody by to touch my heart, amen, and make me understand and realize that I was lost and on my way to hell. Come on, somebody help me right there. Do you remember, you remember where you were? Remember how lost you were? Remember how lost you were and you was in the world and you was wandering around? I might not have made no news in the county or the state that night. 
but I made headlines in heaven. Amen. Oh, yes, I made headlines in heaven, brothers and sisters. And I'm glad. I'm thankful for that. Amen. I made news that day. And if you're sitting in here saved this morning, you did too. The angels rejoiced of another sinner that's getting ready to come home. Amen. Somebody that gave their life to Christ, realized that Christ was born of a virgin and he died for you. Amen. Hung on an old rugged cross. They were rejoicing going on. When you found that truth instilled in your heart, amen, that empty void that we used to try to fill up with alcohol and drugs and everything else, women and fast cars, everything, we try to fill it with everything, brothers and sisters. Good-looking men, let me throw them in there too, amen. We try to fill that void with everything when all we needed was right where you started, brother, a cool drink of living water, amen. I'm glad. I'm glad I found that. I'm glad God brought that to me. And I'm glad that I got saved that night. Amen. I'm glad that you're saved. And I begin to think about that sitting back there. And I think about this a lot because in my downtime and my sister, I guess I'm, God just really honed in on you this morning. You know, I don't ever know what the service, which way it's going to go or who it's for, but I feel God talking to you this morning. I feel His presence and I feel Him talking to you. I remember, you remember, we all remember how it was so brand new when we got saved. I know that feeling of, of, of when, the, when the Holy Spirit entered into me and, and, and things didn't seem like they used to be. Oh, how we remember. But oh, how quick sometimes we forget. But I remember that feeling on the inside when I first got saved. The joy, the salvation, the joy of the salvation was so real on the inside. Do you remember? Can you go back to that time when it was so real? Remember what it was like when you first got saved. Do you want to remember? And I got to thinking and a voice said to me, well, reckon why you don't feel that way no more. Wonder why you don't feel that newness anymore. And the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, sometimes it just happens. Life just way, has a way of just happening. Life just comes and the, and, and, and the seas, the waves begin to crash upon us and the world begins to crash upon us and, and we begin to doubt. It just happens. Have I got a witness? Everybody in here has had a time in your life where life just happened. It just happened. You didn't, didn't really do anything. It just happened. And you didn't feel that anymore. Life has a way of drawing you far, far away. A long way away from God. But don't forget, my brothers and sisters, because I am a Bible preacher. And I was sitting back there looking at my Bible on my iPad this morning. And the Bible still says, in John 15, verse number 11, These things I have spoken unto you, that your joy might remain in you and that your joy might remain full in you. Listen to me. That, that joy may remain full in you, inside of you. John 16 and 24 also says, Hear though, that I have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive. That your joy will remain full. Not empty, but full. 1 John 1 and 4 says, And these things we write unto you, that your joy may be full. God never designed that joy to go away in your life, brothers and sisters. God wanted that joy to stay in you. God wanted you to remain full. He wants us to stay full. He wants it to stay full. Brothers and sisters, the Bible also tells us in Matthew 5 and verse number 6, Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Woo! For they shall be filled. Oh, yes. What are you hungry for? If you're hungry for the things of the world, the world's going to fill your soul. Amen. But if you're hungry and righteous uh, and, and hungry and thirst after the righteousness and the things of God, He says that we could be full and we can be filled. Now, let me say this, and I'm done right here. I, I know what time it is, and I know what time we normally get out of here, and we're going to get out right on time. I said that to say this. You know what that means? 
everything that I just said, that you may be full, you may remain, you, the, the, the joy, won't, he wants the joy, he wants you to be full. You know what that means? Everybody that's hungry for the things of God, you will be filled. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. That just makes me happy right there. Everything that I need from God, if I hunger and right and after that righteousness, God said he'll fill me. Everybody that's hungry, they're going to get what they need. But there's a flip side to that. There's always another side of it. You know what else that means? If you're not hungry this morning, if you're not thirsty for the things of God, you're going to walk right back out that door the same way you came in. Oh, yes, I wish somebody would get with me. Because many don't walk through the door come looking for something from God all the time. We might come in and see who's sitting beside so-and-so or who's wearing what or who's talking to who or what's going on in the church service. And that's fine if you come in here for those reasons. I'm just glad you're in here. But if you come in with that attitude and you come in that way, you're going to stay empty. God's not going to fill you, amen. But when you walk through the door and you're desiring and, and looking for something from God, asking God to fill you, that's exactly when he's going to fill you up and send you back out the door so he can pour you out on somebody else. So, I'm getting ready to close. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have much this morning. God just gave me a little thought right there, and I'm going to share this, and I'm done. I'm glad that there's some in here this morning that have an appetite for God. I'm going to say that one more time. I, I'm glad that there's some in the church house, and not only this church house, but every church. I'm glad that there's some that come in that truly have an appetite for God and the things of God. Brothers and sisters, not everybody's ministry minded. Except on Sunday. Amen. Come on, help me right now. I'm glad you have an appetite today for God. I'm glad. I'm glad. Look, you know something that I know. If you're thirsty, He'll fill you. Amen. But if you ain't thirsty, if you don't want those things, God will walk right by you and leave you alone. If you don't want it, God will not make you, He will not force Himself on nobody sitting in church or out there. He is not going to force Himself. If you don't want it, He'll leave you alone. And in that idle time, in that downtime in your life, that idle time when you don't want those things and you're just desiring what you want, <laughs> that's when Satan's going to pull up in your driveway. That's when he's going to get out. He'll come, knock on your door, amen. And in those down times of our life, how many times y'all heard me say this? That's when we just open the door and we let him in our lives, amen. And we get so comfortable with those things in our life, we done handed them in the remote. He's sitting in your chair. He's changing your channels. He's watching your TV. He's going in there drinking up a little uh, 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 Hispanic guy at, at work. He always said, Satan, drink up all your sweet tea if you let him in the house. And that's exactly what he does. He'll go in his in your, in your kitchen to your refrigerator and he'll drink up all your stuff. Amen. He'll eat up all your bologna, all your bayonets, all your beanie wings. He'll eat up all your stuff. Take everything that you got. Amen. He, look, I'm telling you, when he comes in, he don't get it all. He tries to destroy all. But the next time the devil comes to your house and he tries to remind you of some things, amen, maybe tries to remind you of what it used to be or what you used to be, look, I ain't, you, I, you ain't got time to turn there because I'm going to shut it down right here. Get ready to help me right here, Brother Richard. You hit him right between the eyes, amen, with Psalm 136 and tell him, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, amen. Oh, give thanks unto God of gods, amen, for his mercy endureth forever, amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever, amen. To him, watch this, by wisdom made the heavens for his Mercy endureth forever, amen. And to him that stretched out uh, out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever, amen. To him that made great lights, his mercy endureth forever, amen. For the sun shall rule by day, but his mercy endureth forever, amen. And the moon and the stars, amen, to rule by night, but his mercy endureth forever, amen. Woo! Hey, y'all better help me right here. Him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth endureth forever, amen, and brought Israel out from among them for his mercy endureth forever, amen, with a strong hand, amen, and with a stretched out arm for his mercy endureth forever. 
Have you got a hold of it yet? If you ain't, I got some more, amen. To him who divided the Red Sea into parts for his mercy endure forever, amen. He made Israel to pass through the midst of it for his mercy, the Bible says, endure forever, amen. But overthrew Pharaoh and law and his host in the Red Sea for his mercy endure forever. Oh, have you got it yet? No matter what comes our way, his mercy going to endure forever. Amen. Oh, I said it's going to, y'all, y'all ain't got it yet. Amen. And slew famous kings for his mercy endure forever. Amen. Sean, the king of the Amorites, for his mercy endure forever. Amen. And all the king of Basham, for his mercy endure forever. Amen. And gave the land of Herod, amen, for his mercy endure forever. Amen. And even inheritance to Israel, his servant, for his mercy endure forever. Forever, amen. I got a couple more, amen, who remembered us in our lowest state for his mercy endure forever, amen, and redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endure forever, amen, who will give us food to all flesh for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks to God, amen, in heaven for his mercy endure forever, amen. I said his mercy. It endures forever, brothers and sisters. I said His mercy, it endures forever and ever and ever. I said His mercies endure forever, amen. If you're lonely, if you're lonely, amen, open the Bible to Matthew chapter number 28 and verse 20. Lo, I am with thee always, amen, even to the end of the world, amen. If you're burdened, brothers and sisters, this morning, open the book to Matthew verse chapter number 11, verse number 30. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light, amen. Oh, if you don't know what to do, just open the Bible, open up the good book, amen. Psalm 34 and 19. Many, many, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all, amen. Not some, but all, amen. If you got enemies, you got people coming against you, open it up to Isaiah chapter number 54 and verse number 17. No weapon that's formed against thee shall prosper. If you don't know what to do, open it up, amen, to Proverbs chapter number 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, amen. Lean not on thy own understanding. Acknowledge Him, amen, and He shall direct thy paths. Romans 8 and 31 says, For if God be for us, who can be against us, amen. I said if God be for us this morning, who can be against us, amen. He'll fight your battles, amen. He'll give you hope. He'll give you joy deep down. I said God will help you through your struggles, amen. Everything that you need, His mercy endure forever. I'm through. I'm through. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, a good prayer this morning, a good prayer this morning, God, God, make me thirsty again. God, make me thirsty again. God, give me that desire again. God, give me that what was once on the inside and I let the world hide and push it down. God, would you give it to me one more time? God, would you give me, would you give me, would you fill me with your spirit one more time? God, would you help me this morning? Make me hungry again. God, give me my desire back. And if you pray that to Him, I promise you one thing, brothers and sisters. He will. He'll give you the desires of your heart. God will give you exactly what you need in your spirit, amen, to make it through another day. It ain't always easy. But God always, always shows up right on time, amen. Not our time. His time, amen. I said He will. I said he will, amen. You started this this morning talking about that water, amen. The living water or, 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 or the way, whatever that song was you sung, that, that water, the river, yes, the river. There was a woman in the Bible that was thirsty. And she showed up at that well one day. And Jesus gave her living water. God gave her living water. And she went home, brothers and sisters. With the whole well, and all was well. Amen. Amen. Ain't you glad of that this morning? Ain't you glad Praise that when God. you show up thirsty, God will fill you. He'll give you that, that water that you need to quench your thirst. 
your fear, your spirit. Help us, Lord. Everybody stand to your feet. How many of you have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Oh, I'm redeemed. said something a while ago. Oh, it may have been the other fellow here. I got a little something going on up here, but that's okay. Uh, the day I got saved, I got saved at Ross, Ross Chapel Baptist Church in Eastville, Oklahoma. And when I got home, I was, I was wanting to tell my neighbors. And just like you said, one on one side and one on the other side. You ever said, you ain't getting saved. What are you, crazy? That's what I heard. But I know when I fell on my face in that altar in that old Baptist church, I was redeemed yes. Yes. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. I said I was redeemed right. at that point in time right. by the blood. Mm. Of the Lamb. But now that Lamb that saved us, I said that Lamb that saved us, He's not coming back at the Lamb. As the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, riding a great white horse. Don't y'all like horses? Amen. Beautiful animals. He shall be riding the King. To pick up his children. Can you imagine that sight? When he splits the eastern sky, the trumpets are sounding. And we're instantly called up. The dead in Christ. The seeds would give up the dead. Then we, that are still, you know, then we get called up. The graves are going to bust open. Then we're going to be called up. Amen. So we can be planted, but we will grow again. But like I said earlier, if I live on this earth, I'm with God. But if I die, if I die, I'll be with him. It's a balance situation. Balance. 
let's go outside these walls and for a moment stop being chair warmers or pew warmers. In this case, it's a chair warmer. We got chairs. Thank God for the cushions that we're sitting on. Amen. But I, I, I told the church one time we were ministering in song, and I, and I felt led to tell everybody in the church, move forward, one pew. One pew. And after they all moved up one pew, I said, no. The Bible tells us not to look back on our past, but I said, I want you to look back and see where you were sitting. But look where you are now, and look where you're going. Once you, once you come to the altar of repentance at the foot of the cross, through the blood of Christ, That's to be with him. But in the meantime, we got to be witnesses. We've got to be a witness for Christ. Not only by mouth, but people look at us daily, on, on a daily basis. I don't care where you are. They're looking at you. And they know. Ninety percent of the time, you're the only Bible that ain't anybody else is going to see. But when you're in the Word, you study it up, pray it up. People are going to see the difference. It's time to quit being as the world. We've got to be a separate people. And what I mean by being a separate people. When we come to Christ and we're in his word, we've got to show and live and be that light to those lost souls out there. And trust me, there are lost souls out there. I'm not making that about the Bible altogether. We can tell the tree by the fruit it bears. If it's a non-bearing fruit tree, then you need to pray. And if you don't have nobody else to pray for, pray for me. Brother Frankie needs it. Sister Tina needs it. Anybody in leadership needs it. And God help our te- uh, all the teachers. They need it. They need to be also a light to the students and give them the right back to be able to tell them about because a lot of them are not getting it either. Because of the way they're living. And I have nothing else to say about it. No one else to say about it. Remember your own soul. 